Next up in the set of lightning speakers is Beatrice Martinez. Hello, everyone. My name is Beatrice, and during this session, I will be sharing two different approaches to getting started writing eDPF programs. In order to be monitoring from which location an application is consumed, we will need to instrument it or configure an external service. We are going to see today how we can do it without making any changes at all by using an eDPF program. Running in the kernel, we get the source IPs from the request to a specific port, write those into an eDPF map, and that can be accessed from a Golan user space application. And using UIP, we'll get the locations from the IPs and paint the points in the map. Starting with our eBPF program in C, we will compile it with Clang. Then, in this case, we are going to use TC to load it. The verifier will ensure that it's safe and the program is always going to exit. And then the code will be just in time compiled to the underlying CPU architecture. Our program will be running event-driven every time a new packet arrives to the TC control ingress. Let's see the code. We define our port 8083. And then we have the section to define the ADPF map. This is the type of the map and the pinning will determine the options to how the map's file descriptor is going to be exported via the file system. This will allow us then access from the colon side. In this section, we will define the program and our function is going to be getting as context all the, all the packet metadata. We are going to be reading from the Ethernet to the IP to the TCP layers until we get and locate the TCP port. If this port is 8083, we get the source address and write it in the stroke that we have defined over here. The last step could be to use this helper function to push the event in the data source map. Once that we have the program, let's compile it using Clang. And now we are going to use TC to specify in the VP of that we just get and the relevant section that we have named before. And that could be all. We can now move to the Golan side. In Golan, we can access the VPF map data with this path. And we are going to read the events and send those into this Golan channel. From the Golan side, we will be reading those requests and process those, getting the country from its IP and then updating some counters that we need to represent the map, loading those in JSON format that we are going to be serving. Over here, as you can see in the static index, we are going to use this data to represent the map. That will be all. Now we can run our Go application. We are going to access our port 8083 several times from our um, PM in the States and also a few times from um, my browser. I'm located in Spain. And now we could be able to access the map and see both locations, the States and Spain. Let's go back to the next example. We are going to use now a different approach. EDPF programs can be attached to different events, K-Probs, trace points, network packets, and in this case, we'll be attaching ours to UProbs event from the user space. In this example, we'll be having the same simple application that allow us to receive a word in the HTTP GET request. We'll be tracing the Go function that receives that word as argument. We'll be using, in this case, Go VPF, which use BCC underlying and provide Go functions, making it more simple, the flow of compiling, loading, and attaching the program. Let's see the example. We have already run in our simple applications and we can send in the HTTP request any words that we would like, like um, eDPF. And we'll be having this function printing the word out there. This is the one that we are going to be tracing. First change that we see is that we have our C code um, as a constant in a string. And the second would be how we are going to attach state. So every time that uh, this function is executed, given that we have attached to this uprof event, we can execute our function over here that get as context a pointer from which we need to calculate the offset to start reading the arguments. Once that we have those, we are going to use this eDPF map to submit those events. We are going to be reading it from the goal side using this channel. And the only thing we are going to do now is uh, print the word. So let's see how we are going to submit a new word now. 
um, summit and we will get it over here from EVPF side. As conclusions, EVPF programs are event-driven, and those events can be every time a new packet arrives or every time a function in a user space application is executed. There are frameworks available that make it a lot of easier, and we've been able to monitor an application we are having to instrument it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Beatrice. It's wonderful to see how easy it is to get your first EVPF program going. Let's give a round of applause to Beatrice for a well-done uh, lightning talk.